All right, guys, well, thanks for coming back. Today, we wrap up this project. We had a customer that had nothing but a hill for a backyard and with two small children they needed a solution so we came in cut out the backyard built them a retaining wall level out the top we use the soil that we excavate to level out the bottom of it and now today we're going to be wrapping this entire project up and taking you along for the ride so what are we waiting for let's get right into it on the last video we got all of the base installed and now we've got to toe in the wall before we can start building it up but first we've got to get it secure works great to clean all of the dirt out of the cracks and crevices before the first course goes down on top of it. He slags off the block to knock off any rough edges to make sure that every course lays flat, true, and even with the course below it. Every course gets cleaned and also every course gets stringlined. That way if an individual block gets off, it doesn't throw the entire wall off. With a piece in my hand and bloodshot eyes, I walk to the water for a last goodbye. He begs so much, it clouded my mind. One thing's clear, the man's gotta die. Man makes right, so he said, when he held all the keys over our head. I lived in that grip, but now he'll learn at the end with the tables turned. Because this wall butts up to the house, Blaine has to build a corner unit to keep the running bond of the retaining wall on course. This is a Husqvarna K770 we've been using. Frankie and I tested it last year and didn't think anything special about it. Pulled it out for the last job. We've had it for a while. And uh, I think it only got used once or twice. That's because I wasn't as in love with this saw as Sam is. When Stan first got it, I love it. This is my favorite gas powered one we got. The units that butt up to the house get saw cut because we need a very tight, precise fit. The ends of the retaining wall will be visible, so Blaine hand splits a block to give it the rough faced look that will match up with the face units. All right, we got one more course. So one more course and then the caps, so 
damn it is humid today it's more humid than it was yesterday i don't put my shorts on lame <laughs> End ones are split, so we have the rough face facing outwards, so you don't see a flat face. We're splitting the last of the top caps too, so you have the nice rough face. So next step, I'm gonna lay out all these caps, figure out what cut I need for this one, glue them down, and then just get that all taken care of and backfill it, and we will be done. All right, so we gotta do a cut to finish this one. So what we do for these is just measure. So we got six inches from the back. So measure six inches from the side that you're gonna cut there. And then we can just put the square on there. Draw a straight line and it should drop right in. Like a glove. Look at that. All right. All right. So the wall is done. We glued the last cap right before it started to rain. So that was pretty lucky. I'm usually not that lucky. So yeah. The wall is done, but the rest of the work has just begun. And with the rains coming in, they're going to call it till the next morning. So here's the plan. We're gonna fill in along the back of our wall here, that little bit we still gotta do, and then we gotta regrade, we gotta grade all this out. So we got the hydro bucket out here. That should make pretty quick work of that, and then sod it. We'll probably be doing that in the morning, but before we fill this in, most important part, gotta sign it. I'm gonna go see if the kids wanna write their names on the back of there too so and then we'll start filling her in good hey morning so question for you yes. um i do this thing on all the jobs we do where like we'll sign it okay. you know so i wasn't sure you know if like the kiddos wanted to come oh, and write their name or something on the back of the on wall the back of the brick? yeah before we seal yeah, it up that'd so. be awesome when you're doing it now yeah right. okay they are in the middle of breakfast, so we'll try to get Oh, them. yeah, no, that's cool. They'll have, yeah, they got a little bit. I'll go, I'll get some markers and stuff okay. and just whenever you want to come out there, yeah. Awesome, yeah, we'll wrap up and come on out. Cool. So this is actually the first wall that Sam's ever based out on his own. Blaine helped set the first block and oversaw and checked to make sure everything was on, but otherwise, the rest of this wall was based out by Sam. We got the kids artwork all on there so seal her up with the wall done now we've got a yard to build and all of the material that we excavated out to build the wall will get reused to build the yard
With the general contour set, the boys can switch gears and start to concentrate on the finished grade. So they bring in the Hydra bucket with the built-in Harley rake. This bucket allows them to keep grading, but also to start to loosen up the soil to prep for the last stage, which is seed or sod. It's the little things that make you feel this way Don't let their words fill you up with doubt Lift your head and watch your dreams bridge With the finished grade going down, it's time to make the brown ground turn green. Alright, Blaine, you ready to get free and filthy? All right, to quote everybody's favorite Italian plumber, here we go. All right, guys, well, that's all we got for you on this video, but as much as Sam loved that Husqvarna saw, I thought maybe we should put that thing to the test. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and we've got some really cool projects coming up. Sam and Blaine have already moved on, and they're starting another one that is in progress right now, and Alex and Tim also have a really cool project coming up, so make sure you guys subscribe if you like job site videos, and let me know if you want to see us do a torture test on that Husqvarna. Catch you later, guys. And the whole point of this job was this family wanted a usable backyard. This was all pretty gnarly hill, if you all remember. They were definitely happy with what they got. All right, so that's that. Let's uh, get on to the next one. All right, guys. Well, that's our video for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Sam and Alex and Blaine and Tim and all of us have a really cool bunch of new projects coming up. And I've got some stuff I'm going to be working on with Frankie coming down the pipeline. So I hope you guys do me a favor and subscribe. That's all we got for you. If you like these job site videos, let me know in the comments down below. And if you want me to do more product testing, let me know that too. I'm kind of thinking since Sam fell in love with this Husqvarna chainsaw or chop saw, I think we should really put that to the test. What do you guys think? But I don't want to deviate away from our job site videos. You guys seem to like them, so I'm going to keep those coming as well. God bless you guys. Go get them, and hopefully we will see you on the next one. Hit that subscribe button and do me a favor. There's a bell notification up in a corner somewhere. Hit that and we'll be good to go. See you next time, guys. Have an awesome whatever it is you're doing. Just awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, as I've said probably a few times at this point through this video, Blaine and I uh, discovered this Husqvarna K770 is probably the best gas-powered concrete saw we have. So, I mean, this thing is four, it's a 14 inch one, 14 inch blade. The thing all together weighs a little over 20 pounds. It's like 21 or 22 pounds. Max RPMs on that sucker is like, it's like 18,000, I think. Something crazy like that. Five horsepower engine on it. 
yeah this, this thing is just a wild machine and it's got another little feature that I like for cutting hooking it up to the hose that all moves instead of being solid there yeah this this thing's pretty nice we would absolutely recommend it for 900 bucks it's you get what you it's well well worth its money it has a uh this kind of wild dampening system on the main arm here you really don't you really don't get the torque pull on it like you do with uh, the other saws that we've used so i would absolutely recommend this thing if you're in the market for a new concrete saw